Hello everybody and welcome to McCann Tech School in uh, North Adams for tonight's Western Mass Franklin West contest between uh, two Berkshire County teams and two long rivals and foes, the Lady Eagles of Mount Ever and the McCann Tech Horns. Thanks for joining us everybody. Alongside uh, John Franzoni, I'm Rick Bua, uh, our producer and camera operator, Peter Gentile. And uh, John, it's, it's always nice to come down McCann. Nice and cozy down here. Uh, and we set up in the corner where it's, it's, uh, it's fine and away from everybody. But uh, tonight, uh, two girls with uh, young teams, uh, for sure, uh, and, a, and a new coach, and in a sense, a new program at McCann. Yeah, definitely a young team at McCann. Uh, Justin Kratz coming back to coach the uh, girls this year after many years leading the boys program and then taking a break as he uh, has been pretty busy as a principal, which he still is. And uh, so it's nice to have that stability coming back into the program with a coach who can – work with a young team and help them make progress that they need to make during the course of the, the, uh, the basketball season. And I'm um, looking forward to seeing what they accomplish tonight. So McCann, uh, winless so far. Hopefully that will bring them some luck tonight and a little home cooking here on their home floor. And uh, they come in 0-5 overall, 0-3 in the league. Mount Everett just above them. They've, uh, they're have they 1-4 and 1-2 and in the league. Uh, they're led by uh, Emily Stewart-Nagel, uh, averaging double figures right around 10. And Michaela Carpenter uh, at nine. We'll turn it over to the PA announcer here at McCann. for McCann Tech.
Well, the good news, John, is uh, I get our rosters off I Berkshire's most of the time, and uh, so uh, we thought we knew the McCann kids, and I didn't bring the program from the uh, Jamboree. So we, I, I'm one player off, but one number probably might have been changed. So we're going to clear that up as soon as we can for one of the McCann starters. But uh, for, uh, for sure, it's uh, R Riley Geeden, uh, Hannah Boisvert, uh, Brooke Reynolds, Aiden Champney, and we got to find out uh, number 30, uh, 31, John, I think is the, the other starter. I think I'm Maya Todd, I think, I, I, 21. Okay. Maybe it's Maya Todd. And if one difference is here at the bat is with the experience of the two teams. Um, you know, as you mentioned, McCann has the one senior and uh, Hannah Boisvert, but they start two juniors, a sophomore, and I believe they said Riley Guidance a freshman, so as opposed to Mount Everett, who has three starting seniors and two juniors. So a little bit of experience, edge goes to Mount Everett to start the game off, and a little bit of a size advantage, too, from the looks of things. Just about ready for action at McCann. Put eight minutes up on the clock. The head coach for Mount Everett is Josh King, and of course, uh, as John mentioned, Justin Krantz, coaching the girls this year. And here we go. And I think it's knocked out by Hannah Boys for it, and it's going to be, well, they're going to do it again. That's a break for the Hornets. We'll yeah, take it. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looked like Hannah slapped her right out of bounds. Yeah, I would say that that was so. Uh, and, like, she, uh, and she did. Yeah, okay. So my eyes aren't deceiving me, John. Joe Maruko <laughs> stepping in as a veteran yeah, there. That's a good a, call. No, no, no. <laughs> Emily Stewart-Nagel, a senior, her the leading scorer, is the quarterback. Looks like McCann's playing a man-to-man, -man, trying to jam that middle up. Stewart-Nagel drives, puts it up, it won't go, tapped out, and she's gonna pick it up again, and they're gonna reset it. It's picked up by her sister, Allison. A little bit of that size advantage from Mount Everett right there, tapping the ball back out for a second chance. There's an almost interception there by Boisvert. She's on the floor. And we got a travel call. Good deed by Hannah Boisvert, getting her hands on the ball, keeping up high, taking advantage of her height. Bradley Guyton. And I said at the Jamboree, John, uh, they were very, very young. I said, just needs a ball handler, you know? So he, uh, he may have one. They do move the ball on pretty well. That's going to be the key. Mount Everest come out in a 2-3 zone, so you got to move the ball, make that zone work a little bit. Don't want it to stay on one side of the court. Six on the shot clock. Nice Forsberg goes up a little bit hard. A rebound up and in. Nobody boxed out on the other side. Nice Brooke Reynolds with the first swoop of the night. That's where you can really attack a zone on that weak side. Then we boxed out, and Brooke Reynolds took advantage of it. Coach Krantz, yelling out defensive instructions here. Knocked out of bounds. will stay with Mount Everett. 10 on the shot clock, just underway here at McCann. McCann's doing a nice job defensively, trying to just back off their defender, or their offensive player and defend in the paint. Five on the shot clock. Got to launch a long shot. It's going to be a little bit strong. Picked off by Todd. And there goes the shot clock. They're going to keep the play here. We may have an injury. Maya Tide might have turned an ankle there. And it's a tough blow for McCann. Just took an awkward step there. Hopefully she's okay. I think she, I think she fell down or, or slipped or whatever. Right when the pass was coming in from Boisvert. And we, were, we were a little blocked from the action. Hey, right. I don't think she slipped, but we'll see. So we're going to take a little quick pause here as they uh, they check out the McCann Tech Hornet on the floor. Amaya Todd, hope to show okay. We'll be uh, we'll be right back after this. Okay. 
Hey, Maya got up and uh, walked off very, very gingerly. I feel so bad because uh, she looked, had so much pain on her face. Well, she'll get checked out by medical personnel here at McCann. Turn around, pop is good. Just into the ball game. It's a number we don't have. Twenty-five. We don't, we, that's the one we don't have. We will clear everything up at halftime. I'll go to the scorebook and see Mike Dowling. And it's going to stay right with Mount Everett. I would say that's the way they enter a game, though. Number 25 comes right in, first touch on the ball, and knocking the foul line jumper. Good confidence. Oh, nice fake. She goes up and uses the glass and scores. Emily Stornagel, their leading scorer with the first hoop for the Eagles. That's a nice move by Emily attacking the basket. Good ball fake. Here's the steal. She makes the steal. Oh, she got cut off, though. Good decision, though. Don't force it. Pull it yeah. back out, run your offense. Oh, nice bounce pass into the paint. Won't go. Rebound by Boisvert. She's going to lose it. Some nice ball move by Mount Everett there. Really looked, made the extra pass. Just couldn't finish inside. Creamer puts the ball in play. Oh, there's no, no whistle. They're letting him play. Yeah, I say, they're letting him play tonight. Shot no good. Up and rebound. Nobody box out. And scoring is Michaela Carpenter. And evens the game up at four here with four and a half to go here in the first quarter at McCann. Stuernager with a steal. Hannah Boyce almost pulled off the uh, interception there. You know, Carpenter and Stuernager are the two leading scorers for Carpenter Denver. all the way down, uses the glass and scores and gives her team a lead. Four quick points for Carpenter over the last 30 seconds or so. Yeah, she and Stuernager are really taking over the last couple of possessions for Mount Everett. Shot's a little bit long, and it'll go over to the Eagles. So Carpenter and Stuernagel, uh, with all six of their points, are averaging between the two of them uh, 19 points a game of their of their 24. So you can see why. I mean, they those, both move well yeah, they with do. the ball. They yep. both move, you know, move themselves and the ball very well. Carpenter's finished very well off some nice passes inside. Jordan Eggles in no hurry here. She tries to set it up. Carpenter puts it up. Uses the glass again, no good. And they dominate those boards, John. Jordan Eggles going to come back and set it up again. You can see him on there. They Carpenter calling players. for the ball. Carpenter's baseliner won't go. Boysford finally comes down with it. And that's at least the second or third time that Emily's come down with a rebound but lost it. Yeah, Mount Everett's really committed to the boards. They have five players beneath the free throw line going, going to the offensive boards. Every Whitney Tatro, number 30 in the game for the first time for the Hornets. Three sixteen left first quarter. No fouls called so far, John. A couple, a couple, uh, <laughs> couple questionable that they let go, and that's good. Yeah, that's being, really good. Let the kids con, play. Yeah, very consistent. Let them play. Stuart Nagel. She dishes off, shot is blocked, picked off by Boisver. Here comes Hannah, uses her left hand. Chamney's going to take a pop, it's going to be short. Nice save there. Chamney again in the lane, scores off the glass. Well, kids are using the glass, John. That's good. But old school tonight, yeah. but great hustle by McCann to keep that ball alive and get the second shot for Aiden Chamney. Game tied at six. Well, we were kind of hoping we put this on schedule, John, that these teams are kind of evenly matched. They usually match up pretty good, both home and away. Shots a little bit high. Picked off by Carpenter. She takes it all the way to the hole, and we got a foul. Here's our first foul. Joe Morocco says, no, I can, we, yeah. can let, we can let some stuff go, but. Yeah, she got her money's worth on that one. Foul's a foul. It's going to be on Hannah Boysford, and that's her first team's first, of course.
off the back iron. Give him, I Al say, Allison Stornagel back in the game. I'd say give him on Everett's size and uh, aggressiveness on the board. That's the one player, Hannah Boyser, that McCann cannot get in foul trouble tonight. That's right. Yep. Second one, also no good. And Hannah used her right hand this time, bringing it up. She's the girl with all the experience on the team, John. Third, third year starter here, a senior. Yeah, I mean, she's their blocked. one senior. They're, you know, they're obviously their big center inside, so they need her on the court looking to get good shots. A little bit of a force there. Carpenter Stuernagel. Trusted Kranz yelling, hands up. That's a good matchup there. Almost a steal by Ch Champney. Here comes Aiden. She goes up and is fouled. Great play by Aiden Champney. Yeah, she came in on the left side and uh, she did everything right. Yeah, she made a nice steal. Really leaned in to get that uh, good aggressive take to the basket and gets herself on the free throw line for two shots. Off the front end, she'll get a second. That's a key, too, the way she drove to the basket there. She leaned in, went to strong to the basket. There was no fading away from the contact. She went right into it. And can't get the roll. Carpenter with the rebound. So we're going to call Carpenter's name a lot tonight, John, and the tour Stuernagel sisters. So that's, that's where you want the ball. When you have a ball handler, that's who you want. Carpenter shot. Oh, it goes halfway down and out. Boyser's going to take it up herself. Slow it down a little bit. Oh, nice cut. And she uses the glass and in. Beautiful little pass there. Good nice pass nice assist Reynolds. there. That was a great look by Reynolds. Hannah Boyser, her first hoop of the night. And the Hornets take that two-point lead again. We're under a minute here in the first quarter. Very evenly played game here, except for maybe rebounds. Yeah, clear edge for Mount Everett on the yeah, boards. Yeah. Stuernagel. And we got a foul. It's going to be on uh, Whitney Tatro. I grabbed the arm as she uh, was driving in. That's going to put Allison Stuernagel, a senior, on the line. Yeah, both the Sternagels are aggressive going to the basket. <clears throat> Emily, number 10, really does a nice job distributing to her teammates. Hey, Amaya Ty, back in the game, John. Well, that's good news. That is great news, yeah. Hannah Boyser going to get a little breather here. So Justin Kranz uses the last 40 seconds of the first quarter to get her catch her breath with the timeout uh, at, uh, during the quarter. And a lot of coaches do that, John. It gives them just enough sometimes. Yeah, it's a smart timeout. You get that extra minute at the end of the, uh, end of the quarter, and then you get the break in between quarters to give your... Uh, senior, a couple of extra minutes of rest. Pass is done it for Tatro, goes out of bounds, but it was knocked away by Stuernagel, so it'll stay with McCann. 26.8 on the clock. Hornets uh, holding a two point lead at 8 6. Champney put the ball in play underneath her own hope. And it looks like a uh, steal here. We got a steal by Allison Stuernagel. If ever it plays for the last shot. 13 seconds left. Champion with a steal. Let's see if she goes in the left side again. Nice look. Short pop. No good. Oh, she gets a rebound. Oh, we're going to have a foul from the back. It looks like it's going to be on number 33. Aliyah Creamer. Good aggressive play by Champion, but she went down hard there. Hopefully she's okay. So that foul was uh, on the floor, which is uh, who put the ball in play underneath their own hoop again with 3.1. So they got, still got a time here. Tatro put the ball in play. Shot is up a little bit short. And John, except for the rebounds, it could have been a, a more even quarter as the Hornets uh, it will take an 8-6 lead after the first eight minutes. Yeah, just what you want. A good competitive first quarter and 
matchup between Monever and Mount Grail. Uh, sorry, McKeon. Uh, McKeon's done a nice job of moving the basketball against the defense of uh, Mount Ever. Aiden Champney with a couple of key steals led to some transition opportunities. The key thing for McKeon, like as you mentioned, Rick, they've got to get on the boards and limit those second shots for Mount Ever because they've really gotten killed in that area. Yeah, I for. Three years, John. Uh, well, for for two. I'm sorry. This is uh, Hannah Borger's senior year. For her sophomore and junior year, um, when we we would do games down here, uh, John Bird and I were calling them the Twin Towers because it was uh, Macy Tatro, uh, who was the leading scorer last year. Uh, they they uh, both battled really really hard underneath the boards, and McCann during that period of time uh, did have their way uh, with offensive defensive rebounds. So. Well, I can see you, know, you can you can see McCann's game plan. I think on defense is to try to help boys who are inside because their defense is not extending out and trying to pressure the Mount Everett players. It's trying to get into the paint and make them shoot over it. Got to give Mount Everett credit. They've been pretty disciplined about swinging the basketball, using some ball fakes, trying to get some penetration and get into the paint. They're pretty relentless trying to get in there, and McCann's trying to keep them out. So that's going to be the battle tonight. Who wins that? Uh, paint battle with Mount Everett's on offense. Boy, it seems like all the time, John, when we do games, we're, talk, we're talking about how young the teams are. Yeah. We're both the boys on the boys' side and on the girls' side, too. And, uh, yeah, when you got one senior, it's, it's, it's a bright future. Yeah, McCann's playing some young players, so this is a good opportunity to get to this varsity experience, and can't replace that. They certainly look down low, that's for sure. Shot was up, no good. Rebound is up, no good by Boisvert. That first shot was put up by uh, Guyton. So McCain's exchanging a favor with Guyton a couple from the offensive paint. rebounds. Well, they're getting shots off, John. That's the only way you're gonna score. They're getting good shots off. Yeah, McCain's taking care of the ball tonight. They've gotten some good shots every possession. And uh, Stuernagel gets shut off. Takes a pop in the corner. Oh, she's got it. Knocks down a three. All right, and Joe said only two. Oh, only two. Okay. Four points for Stuernagel. Oh, nice dish by boys for the shot from uh, Todd just won't go. Yeah, McCann has shown some great ability to move the basketball with yeah, some interior well. passing. Just got to finish now. Josh King yelling move. He wants these girls to set up. Stuernagel is going to dish off. Carpenter takes a short pop. It won't go. She's going to get her own rebound, though, I think. And she does. They're going to reset again. So that's McCann's going to have to limit that for sure. You don't want to get possession after possession after possession. Right. We always told our kids that uh, first shots don't win the game, second shots do, and you got to limit those. Stuernagel drives, gives it up. Uh, Tatro, she's going to have a hard time with that. Like, she's going to have to come out. She uh, seems to be in a lot. She's going to come out. Chamney will replace her. Yeah, she's really trying to battle through it. <laughs> Turn around shot. No good, but uh, the hard work by Hannah Boyce will put her to the line here. Got a foul on Carpenter. First one a little hard. <laughs> Ava Kratz, number 13, a sophomore in the game for the first time. Second shot is a little bit too strong. Both teams 0 for 4 from the line so far. Oh, nice fake. And it's stolen away. McCann basketball. McCann's doing a nice job of when Mount Everett does get by that initial defender, they're rotating well and helping on defense, stepping into the passing lanes. They've gotten a few steals that way. Yeah. 
Bradley Guyton. Shot is good. She keeps shooting. She finally scores. First bucket of the night. And another two-point lead by the Hornets. Three minutes played here, second quarter. Five to go here. At McCann. There's a three by Sturnagel. Back iron, no good. Nice box out by Champney. She's going to slow it down here. It's good to see Champney back after that hard foul at the end of the first quarter. She seems to be okay. Blocked. Shot from the side is no good. Another third chance. Kratz gets the ball. Nice dish underneath the Champney. She scores! Nice assist by Hannah Boysvert. Four for Champney and a 12-8 lead for the Hornets. Some really nice cuts to the basket by the McCann players. They've done a great job moving out the basketball. Shot no good. Rebound by McCann. Champney, she's right on the ball. She always has her hands on and the ball. And she gets tied up. And it's going to go to Mount Everett. Leah Creamer back into the game. Give Michaela Carpenter a little breather here. 4-11 to go in the second uh, quarter. Biggest lead of the night for the Hornets at four points at 12-8. Stuart Nagel drives, puts it off the glass, won't go, rebound McCann. Here comes Boysvert. Cross court, that's a dangerous pass. And that cross court pass was probably off, off the nose. That's tough, it was a tough pass going across, but then there was a tip which made it more difficult for the McCann player to get their hands up on it. Boy, it's been that's uh, been physical. We've had uh, we've had a few injuries already tonight, and hopefully uh, this one uh, will be very very minor. Three forty eight to go. Twelve eight McCann. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Go away. Okay, we are back, and um, number twenty five uh, is the young lady that scored that basket in the first quarter that John and I said uh, we <coughs> she's probably on the roster and with a number change. We're going to clear that up at halftime. So they're going to get ice right on her forward right away. 3.45 with the clock running here at McCann. 12-8. Hornets over the Eagles of Mount Everett. Mount Everett with the basketball. Here's the steal by Guyton. She has it knocked away. It's going to stay with McCann. Nice hustle by Sternale getting back for the tip. To thwart the McCann fast break. Yeah, she looks like a very talented uh, young basketball player. She does a nice job on both ends of the court. Shot won't go, but a good shot. Uh, Chamney's had some good looks tonight. Yeah, Chamney and boys are doing a nice job of finding each other inside and taking some good yeah. shots. Yeah. Good quality yeah, scoring Yeah, they share the basketball nicely, John. Yeah, yep. very unselfish. Shot no good, rebounded by the Hornets. Boysvert, a little bit short. She had the right idea, John. I think she wanted to be a little bit closer for that little jumper. And McCain's doing a much better job in the second quarter, limiting second shots, and it's leading to some better scoring yeah. opportunities for the They're boxing out, the they're, get, they're, they're getting uh, good defensive rebounds. Sturnagel gives it up. Eagles are being very patient. Shot no good. And Champney comes down with the ball. And she's tied up again. She's, she's a toughie. Yeah, great she's work very, by Champney yeah. in there. I enjoy watching her play. She goes up and gets a rebound with two hands. She's uh, aggressive and physical on the boards for them and does, has done a nice job scoring on the offensive end. Izzy Dodge, number five in the game at a guard position. And they turn it over. Stuernagel has it knocked away by Boysvert. 
Boisver with her left hand, steps on the end line. Unfortunately, it'll go back to Mount Everett. Coach Krantz questioning that. I don't think the coach thought it was even close, John. But uh, yeah, I think he thought that if she stepped, she got forced out. Yeah. And uh, there was a little contact there. 154 to go, 12 to 8. Nothing there for Carpenter. Nice reverse in the lane. And we got a foul by Champney. Ah, good effort though, you know? She's always ran the ball. Yeah. <laughs> Hooks just to the ball a, and you see 24 for White. Yeah, just a 10th grader. <laughs> Maya Todd, back in the game again. She's gonna give it another shot here. Hopefully that ankle will hold up for her. She's tough. Battling out there for them in either size. Put me in coach. Under a minute and a half left here. A lot of defense, John, like we thought. That one looks like line. Oh, it's off back iron. It's going to go out of bounds. It's going to stay with uh, Mount Everett. Yeah, McCann's defense has been very um, effective in the second quarter. They're staying inside. They're forcing some outside shots, except for that early one by Sternagel. Mount Everett hasn't scored in this quarter. A little bit hard, rebound McCann. But I think those are the shots McCann wants Mount Everett to take, those outside, long outside shots right. and keep them off the boards. Champney's shot is good. Boy, she loves that paint, that short jumper, John, in the lane. She's got, uh, she's got six. No hesitation. They find her in there, and she turns and shoots. Squares up nicely to the basket. 14-8, six-point Hornet lead. And we got a foul. Those are fouls coaches don't mind too much, John, as long as it's not a critical part of the end of a ball game. But she just shows uh, in initiative, fighting for the ball hard. Right, being aggressive, looking yeah. for the basket. Good job by Brooke Reynolds there. Stuart Nickel must have the ball in her hands 80% of the time, John. And she's tied up, and I think it's going to stay with the Eagles. Yeah, she's the key ball handler for Mount Everett. She did a good job in the first quarter with some nice assists, but the McCain's done a good job of shutting that down in the second quarter. Thirty-two seconds left in the quarter. Fourteen eight McCann. We knew it was gonna be a low-scoring game. Oh. Stewart comes back with it. Almost intercepted. Carpenter down low. She gets tied up. That'll go to the Hornets now. Well, let's see if they take an early shot or if they uh, they hold for one here. Some good aggressive defense by McCann. They're really playing good team defense. Izzy Dodge with the basketball. Champney's shot is back iron. And we would rebound by Reynolds. It's going to be, uh, foul's going to be on the floor, so no shooting. Only five fouls uh, in the whole half, Jen. We went through most of the first quarter without uh, getting one called at all. Spoiler shot is short, knocked out of bounds. So they will not, doesn't look anyway like they'll get the shot off. But Mount Everett will. Here they come, right back at them. Five seconds here. Stuart Nagel. Say find long, her. long pop. Oh, off the glass. They needed that one badly. Emily Stornagel with a three has seven points uh, in the first half. And let's see, let's see if they even put the score up there. Should be 14-11, should be I believe. That was a big basket by Sternagel. It only had her early, I think on the first possession of the second quarter she scored, and she scored in the last possession of the quarter, but nothing in between her Mount Everett. So we're going to take a short break, ladies and gentlemen, here at halftime at McCann. The uh, Lady Hornets are holding what we believe. There we go. All right. So they just there's the three-point basket by Stuart Nagel. So the Hornets are going to take a 14-11 uh, lead into the locker room. 
and uh, we'll take a short break. Don't go away. We'll be right back with second half action. Welcome back, everybody, to McCann Tech. Some call it the hive. I call it the hornet's nest. So but it's always nice to be down here. Uh, again, Rick Boyd, John Franzoni, and Peter Gentile bringing you tonight's action. Franklin West contest between the Lady Hornets and the Lady Eagles of Mount Everett. And at the end of the first quarter, it was 8-6 McCann. It's been very, very tight. And at halftime, it's 14-11 Hornets. It was 14-8. The largest uh, lead was at six points. And then uh, just before time uh, went, ran off the clock, Emily Stornagel knocked down a pretty long three. And she, she got a lot of those off, John, in the first half. She didn't make some, but if she, if she makes them in the second half, they could tur totally turn that game around. Right. I mean, McKenna is doing a, a really nice job of trying to keep Mount Everett out of the paint, and it's freed up Sternagel for some outside shots. Those are her two baskets that she scored in the second quarter where she scored five or seven points. She has seven. Mikhail Carpenter has four. They're the two leading scorers for Mount Everett. So yep. McKenna's done a nice job of limiting anybody else, but they've got to do a good job of uh, continue to do a good job of corralling Sternagel because she's the one player that can really hurt them, and McCarpenter feeds off of her with some nice assists. And the Hornets were led by Aiden Champney with six points and two apiece for Brooke Reynolds, Hannah Boysford, and uh, Riley Guyton. So uh, for their 14. And uh, the key here, John, the leading scorer, Hannah Boysford, averaging in double figures, was held at two. She's going to have to score, I think, uh, to, to win this ball game. Yeah, Monever's done a good job of forcing her off the block, getting her a little further out than she wants to be. So hopefully she can get some better scoring opportunities and be a little more patient, looking to get the ball inside. Set play for Sternagel. From the corner, shot won't go. Boysverden taps it to herself. And it brings it up. Shot by Reynolds off the rim. Champney with the rebound. No, oh, Boysverden gets it. Another chance, Hannah's shot is up and in! Hannah Boysford with her first back here in the second uh, half and four in the game. Good start for Boysford in the second half, a nice rebound and score. Both teams got good shots for their uh, senior leaders and uh, Mount Everett didn't finish theirs and Boysford made it count for McCann. Student baseline, drop pass to Carpenter. Carpenter's back iron, no good, rebound. By Todd. Amaya looks uh, like she's doing okay, John, with that yes. ankle. She's had some uh, it's a, a tough fall, but she keeps coming back and playing hard. Guidance shot is short. Rebound up, no good, no whistle. Shot was blocked. It goes out of bounds. It's going to stay with McCann. That's Champion again. Get her hands on the ball for a steal from McCann. So we mentioned just before the start of the ball game uh, that these two teams are uh, low scoring uh, teams average wise so far uh, just under 26 for McCann and only 24 for Mount Everest so they're they're kind of right on, on schedule here right I think you, you hit the key though can McCann get boys a little more involved in the offense in the second half boys from the corner no good Carpenter Looks up to Stuart Eagle, uses the hand, uh, right hand, no good, too hard off the glass. That's a great look by Carpenter. Bounce pass. Oh, she, uh, you... Love to see her use that glass. That was John. the one time they talked about using the glass yeah. in the first yeah. half, and that would have been a good yeah, opportunity. One, there. one dribble off the glass, and she herself a layup. Almost two minutes played here in the second half. 6.02 left on the clock. 16-11 Hornets. <laughs> Trying to get the ball to Boysvert. Back to Champney. Stornagel all over her. There's a nice save by Reynolds. Champney shot in the lane is good. And it, John, I think all her points came from that same spot. Yeah, I think you call her a finisher. She knows how to put the ball yeah. in the hoop. Turnover by Mount Everett. Again, chance to extend their lead here. Seven point lead for the Hornets. That is the biggest lead. It was six of the first half.
By a tight shot, just a little hard. The kid's getting quality shots off, John. We can see Coach Kratz has his team well prepared for tonight. They're attacking the Mount Everett zone with a high-low look at those foul line jumpers, and they're doing a good job of keeping Mount Everett out of the paint on the defensive end. Sternigle gets shut off there by Guyton. Oh, we got an over and back. Kind of created by Champney, John, on that defensive pressure. Well, once again, she's making positive things happen for the McCann team. Reynolds will put the ball in play. Get it to Riley Guyton. She's very careful with her passes, John. She takes care of the basketball. And that time it uh, did get away from the Hornets and knocked out by Mount Everett. Yeah, Guyton's held her own side as a young player, going as an experienced player in Sternagel. She's done a good job for McCann. And of course, right there, she's the the steal. <laughs> Sternagel, left hand all the way to the hoop. Yeah, it's fouled by Champney. She works hard. She's a good ball player. like her a lot. Yeah, Sternagel really makes things happen in a positive way for the Mount Everett team. Every time McCann's try to extend their lead a little bit, she makes a big play. This one's good. Eighteen twelve. It's our first made free throw of the night. In and out. Carpenter gets blocked. By a tie, comes away with the Hornets. Boysvert goes down and scores! A little soft uh, lefty there from the baseline. Nice move by Hannah Boysvert. Yeah. And they, they need him. They need as much as they can get from her. She lost it off her foot. Ella Gennari, a junior, number one, into the game. Loses the ball, and uh, here come the Hornets. Walk the ball up the court. They're in no hurry. Look at, been set up half court offense all night. Oh, nice save there. Oh, it's going to be off boys for. Great idea, John. That's, At, one, of, that's one of those plays. Was good, a good save look. here. The good, good look. Uh, just, uh, just off her fingertips. Just need that bounce pass in the paint. That's one thing we always tried to talk to our kids about is really it's important to, when the, everybody's hands are up high. And so. we got a timeout on the floor with 3.55 left to go here in the third quarter. And the Hornets have opened up a 20-12 to 12 lead. And we'll, uh, we'll keep it right here. And I, did, I did some quick comparisons. Uh, these teams, again, uh, mirror each other so much. From Berkshire County in the Franklin West Conference. And uh, in that Franklin West, John, uh, right now, uh, the uh, the team four and uh, but ten and overall is a renaissance. They uh, they look pretty strong, and then uh, they're followed uh, closely by Granby and uh, the Lee Wildcats, only one and one. So they're all bunched up pretty much. Southwick at one and one, Mount Everett one and two, Ludlow one and two, and McCann still one of this looking for their own tonight. So what can he stand? It's interesting because Granby's two and one, second place, four and two overall. Yeah, and McCann played them tough on their road. They only lost was it the 45-35 loss for McCann. They, they did played them well. Yes. So yeah, shows that McCann is you know they're a young team. They're they're only yeah. going to get better. They're they're showing some yeah. really good things tonight. They got twenty points already, and they're only been averaging about twenty five a game. So. You know, halfway through the third yeah. quarter, they're up in twenty, up in the twenties already tonight, moving the basketball well, getting good scoring opportunities. Aiden Champney's playing a heck of a game, and now Boiser's come alive in the third quarter for them. I think this McCann team is only going to get better and better as the season goes on with these young players really growing into their roles, and with a good yep, veteran leadership absolutely. by players like Todd and Boiser. Stuart Nagel to Carpenter, back to Stuart Nagel. 
Shot is up and around the rim and no good. Rebound up, a little bit too strong. And here comes Boisvert. Champney's shot is no good. Rebound on the floor, picked up by Carpenter. Gets it to Stuernagel. She gets shut off by Guinness. She's gonna pick, go back out, set it back up at the top of the circle. Shot is up, no good. Rebound. It's, it's gonna be knocked off of my tide, I believe. So the Eagles will retain possession. 3.05 on the clock. And we got, uh, we got, we got another timeout called by uh, McCann. Coach Kratz wants to talk it over. Still 20 to 12. You know, the thing about Champney's scoring opportunities down at the McCann offensive end is that she puts it up nice and soft in that free throw line. Like the ball is really a swish, but it just gets up on that ribbon, it hangs there, and it goes in. She does. And that's a sign of a good scoring touch by a player. She loves, yeah, she loves that paint, yeah. They work the ball, uh, the two of them work the ball like Carpenter and Stuernagel do. You right. know, they, they look for each other uh, a lot. So. In, in high school, that's such a key to have two players that feed off each other so well. And you see it on every team, like you mentioned, Sternagel and Carpenter have obviously played together for a while. They find each other. Sternagel has done a good job. But then, you know, Carpenter returns the favor in transition. Uh, McCann's showing the same ability to pass the ball in the interior with Boisvert. <laughs> In Champney. I think Emily Stuernagel, John, is being as, as patient as a, as a point car could be with, uh, at, and a senior also. Um, I, I, she, I don't, I'm not saying she forced a shot today. She may have forced the final shot of the first half right. only because the shot clock was going off. But she's very unselfish. And, and, uh, and uh, if I was her coach, I would tell her to continue looking for the open player. But uh, don't be afraid to take it to the paint because she can knock down her free throws. And she is a pretty good shooter. Yeah, she's a point guard looking for the other her teammates first, but uh, you're right. She's got to look to score. Here's a turnover, and McCann will take over. The clock's wrong. Yeah, the clock has got eight minutes up there. Sometimes I worry when a clock goes to that countdown of the timeout. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. you just you press the wrong yeah, button that's, and you that's lose when your the, time. That's when the problems seem to arise. Right. The countdown for a one-minute timeout, and then when they reset, they have problems. I mean, it's a nice feature of the clock to have, but, you know, the officials monitor that. They take care of it. They just, uh, it's just one more thing to complicate things for the scorekeeper. Okay, they're going to put three minutes on the clock, which I think is correct. No pressure on either team tonight, John, at all. No, they're both <laughs> so, content to sit back in their half-court Yeah, defense. we got to travel. Very few times has Riley Guyton turned the ball over tonight. Yeah, McCann's been very patient tonight. That's a, you're right, that's, they've had very few turnovers, but that was uh, an unforced one there. And we got a touch foul, reach in there. It's gonna be an Izzy Dodge. It's gonna be the, well, the second foul. Second so. foul for the uh, Hornets here in the very, very few fouls. You know, haven't been a lot of attacks to the basket. Both teams have moved the ball while and been content to shoot some jump shots and little little leaners in the paint, but good patient offense. And tied on Stornagel. And she's going to think about that again as Izzy, uh, I, sorry, Hannah Boisver says, not on that one. And that's a good example of McKinnon's defense. They, kind of, they don't put pressure on the ball, but they're contesting the shots. Just with the shot that she had an open look, she, she had a hand in her face. Deflected away, it's going to stay with uh, Mount Everett. I kind of describe McCann's defense as being patient. You know, they're not going out and forcing Sternagel, who can go by players. They're content to sit back and make her face a set defense every time. Sternagel. Oh, nice floater there from the free throw line. 
Tell you, every time Monever needs a basket, she answers a call. 10 of their 14 points for Emily Sternagel. Shot, oh, oh, no good. She uses the glass nicely. Gets it again, no good. Goes up again and scores. Hard work there by Boysburg, John. Great job. She by looked Anna really good on that entire possession. She used the right hand to finish there, too. Nice, nice versatility by the lefty. Eight point lead still. 22 14 for the Hornets. Stuart Nagel goes up a little hard. Boysford with another rebound. She's got to watch her backside. Oh, nice bounce pass and a travel. Nice job being unselfish by Hannah Boyser. They were just a little <laughs> too close together to make that pass, but it was nice luck. Megan Loring, a senior, into the game again for Mount Everett. One nineteen left on the clock here in the third quarter. McCann, 22-14 lead over the Eagles. It's a big last minute 15 here. McCann doesn't want to let Mount Everett cut into this eight point lead. Carpenter looking. She's got Stuart Nagel underneath. Shots a little bit too hard. Rebound up and no good. It's on the floor, it's tied up, and it's gonna to go to McCann. A lot of time coming off the clock in each possession, John, just because of the uh, slow walking of the ball up the court and a half-court offense. Right, the pace of this game makes an eight-point lead a lot bigger than an eight-point lead. Right. Champney shot. Almost got the oh rebound up, no good. She almost got that uh, that bounce again, John. That roll off the the uh, rim like you were talking about. Right. A shooter's little roll there. Puts up there nice and soft. She's every right time. on. She is right on tonight. Sternagel drives, dishes. Carpenter loses the ball, picked up on the floor. Sternagel's going to try it again. Little off balance shot, no good. And Boysford picks it off. And Carpenter's had a couple of tough falls in this quarter. Should be McCann basketball? Yeah. Only one point for they got they got time for a, a baseball pass, but oh, they uh, started the clock though. <laughs> they gotta put one they gotta put one point five up there or two seconds up there. One point two, so we it would be a, a little bit more than a catch and shoot. But Just don't want to turn it over here. No. There you go. That's smart. Just hold it. That's it. That is smart. So the Hornets, who led eight to six after one and fourteen to eleven at halftime, but opened up just a little bit at twenty two fourteen. A well, big quarter for Anna Boyser got six points. So now she's up to eight for the game. Yeah, I said she's going to have to score in the second half. She came right out with six right away. So she may have, she may have had one hope, John, when I made that that statement, but. Uh, McCann being very, very patient, and they're holding their own, a uh, little, little bit undersized, but they're, they're doing okay. Yeah, they've done it after that first quarter. They've really done a good, good work on the boards, good job executing their game plan with keeping Mount Everett out of the paint, limiting their second shots. Hold your opponent to 14 points in three quarters, you're going to be in a good position to win every, every one of those games. So now McCann's got to close it out with that good fourth quarter. We've talked about it a few times that I've been on the show, that a few of the local teams, because they're young, they've had some trouble in the fourth quarter closing things out. So this is a good opportunity for McCann to show they know how to finish out a game and get their first win of the season. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoy watching high school basketball here on Channel 1302 Spectrum and Northern Berkshire Community Television, you certainly love our show, uh, our weekly program, High School Basketball Weekly. Uh, yours truly, John Franzoni and Tim Mori, uh, bring you all the uh, local action. Uh, we do some Western Mass action, Berkshire County, but in particular, we focus on Northern Berkshire, and the four teams we cover, of course, is McCann Tech, Drury High School, Hoosick Valley, and Mount Greylock. And uh, we, have, uh, we have a Player of the Week, and we have guests periodically, and uh, we give you the uh, recap of the week's play on the boys and girls level for the four local schools. That's High School Basketball Weekly.
every Thursday night at 7.30, replayed every Saturday morning at 10, and replayed again Sunday evening at 7 on Northern Berkshire Community Television, channel 1302. It'll be interesting to see if Mount Everett gets a score here if they try to get a little pressure going. There's a steal by Boisver. Boisver at Thor's eye with a nice steal. Stops, she pops, and can't get it to go. I want her so badly trying to take that one dribble. Right, just get a little, yeah. get in there a little closer. Nice look. Turn around by Hannah, it's good! She's having a great second half. That was a great pass inside. I believe that was Brooke Reynolds that found her, and nice finish by Boisvert. She, she's in double figures. Shot a little bit to her, and Boisvert with the rebound. She kind of double well, digits and rebounds, I, I was going to say, she got double-double already, John, yeah. Double in rebounds and uh, 10 points. Tatro's shot is blocked, picked off by Sturenagel. 10-point lead, 24-14, largest night of the night for the Hornets. The thing, John, is if Carpenter and, uh, it doesn't shoot, uh, or Sternagel doesn't shoot. Well, it's hard right now because Sternagel, you see, they was trying to penetrate, look yeah. for something that Mount Everett players without Carpenter in the game weren't yeah, really we moving well. Sternagel hitting the deck hard. Foul on Reynolds, Brooke. And we got a timeout called by Mount Everett with 6.33 on the clock. It's 24-14. Hornets, don't go away, ladies and gentlemen. We will be right back. Okay. Uh, coming off the timeout here. It's 6.33 to go. 24-14 McCann looking for their first one of the season. Well, that's just the way you wanted to start the fourth quarter if you're McCann. You've got an eight-point lead. Get a good steal by Hannah Boisvert. And a nice finish to extend that lead to 10 points in the first minute. Uh, one thing I like about McKeon, John, is that Coach Krantz's kids know their roles already. Right. We can tell they're well-schooled in the way they want to play this game tonight. They're all on the same page defensively, and they're moving the basketball while on offense. That was Allison Sturenagel looking for someone down below, but uh, nobody was there and went out of bounds. And you can see that all five white. Sure, it's a right protecting the basket every single possession for McCann. It done a great job putting a wall up against Mount Everett. Ava Kratz kind of playing catch with Izzy Dodge. Kratz's shot going to be a little short. Boisver had it and lost it. Gets it back. Champney short shot. Won't get the roll this time. Nice box out there by Carpenter. No, I'm sorry. That's uh, that's Creamer. Channing made a great cut during that possession. They just couldn't quite get the ball to her a pass or two before that. Stuart shot, back rim. Boys with another rebound. She's going to go coast to coast on this one, John. Goes up. We'll get it to go. That's Chamney. Nice work by Aiden Chamney. I think, I think she felt somebody coming at the very end, John, and, yep. and let it go just a little bit too soon. Well, we talked in the first half how Champney goes right into the contact, and that's one thing that uh, Hannah could do a little, just get to the free throw line a little more. But she's finishing well tonight. Short jumper by Boisfer, won't go. It's going to stay with McCann, though. Like you mentioned, taking that one more dribble, power into the basket. That way at least you get to the line. Time is, time is not the friend of uh, the Eagles right now, that's for sure. Bounce pass. Nice look. To Stay with McCann again. This is about the fourth opportunity. Champney with the ball. Put the ball in play. Boisvert's got it. Oh, nice underneath block. the Champney off the glass and in. They do work well together. Great pass by Boisvert. Both in double figures. Ten apiece. 26-14. Well, we're getting to the point now, John, with a 12-point lead for the Hornets that uh, to cut into this lead, they, they've got to score in the next couple possessions, or it's, it's pretty much a done deal. Right. 
you said that the pace of this game, a 12-point lead is like a 20-point lead. Yeah. <laughs> That's what McCain doesn't want to do right yeah, there. Yeah, then they get it right back again. Good hustle by Champney once again. Boys for all the way. Mount Everett basketball. Yeah, with this low-scoring game, 26-14, that's a, that's, that's a good-sized lead. And the clock starts as soon as they touch the ball. So each possession, they're taking significant, precious seconds off that clock. Well, I mentioned at the start of this quarter, it'd be interesting Mount Everett scores while they press, but you got to score first, and they haven't done that yet. Bounce pass. Won't go. Boysford with another rebound. Just trying to protect the basketball right now. Sternagel's really being a little extra aggressive, trying to make something happen for Everett. Trying to back in, turn around shot, but she's fouled. It's a nice patient move by Hannah Boyzer. She's starting to dominate a little bit, John, in this game right now. Hannah Boyzer. She is. She let the cutter go through. Yeah. She did a nice job of going, getting to her strong hand and getting to the lane. Uh, that's just a lot of, lot of well, maybe we say pressure. Maybe she doesn't have any pressure on her, but uh, senior, leader, leading scorer. You know. Uses the glass for the first one. She'll get a second. Yeah, Boyce does a nice job of looking for her shot, but she also passes the ball very well inside as well. She has a couple nice assists to uh, Champney tonight. And tied up, and it's going to be Mount Everett basketball. I'm assuming Coach Grants is very pleased thus far, John, with the, with the effort, especially defensively. Got and they've, they've held their own on the boards, except for maybe a wee bit in the first quarter. Right, and it was a good adjustment. In the first quarter, they're having a hard time keeping Mount Everett off the boards, but they have corrected that in the last three quarters of this game. That's been a key. Carpenter's shot won't go. Rebound. We're going to get a foul on the Hornets here. Foul's going to be on Izzy Dodge. Only the second team foul this half, and the third foul called this half. And we're not used to seeing that. Sternagel is tough. She's getting everything she's got from Mount Everett tonight. Three will not go, and guess who gets the rebound again? Making close to 20 rebounds. I know. <laughs> oh. Boys for it, turns around, gets her own. Oh, fights for her own rebound. Carpenter's got it. Got a foul on the floor. It's going to be on Hannah. She mentioned that pass by Champion. That was pretty instinctive. A nice. A nice pivot and bounce pass into the post. That gave Boysford a good scoring opportunity. Those are the little things that you got to believe Coach Kratz is schooling his players on how to get the ball into scoring areas. They're doing a nice job of it tonight. And again, McCann's just content to sit back and let ever dribble the yeah. ball. Paul's going to be on Maya Todd. So two quick fouls here, but uh, nowhere near. Uh, well, yeah, I'm sorry. I forget, John. <laughs> One more foul to be at the line. We're, All we're right, the five the, foul rule. The five right? foul rule this year in, in both boys and girls basketball. And in women's college basketball. It's the only time I, uh, I see a one and one is if I go to a, uh, a men's college game or watch one on television. I will say the one good thing about that, if Everett does go to the line, is they're one for six tonight, so. Well, Coach Krantz's game plan has worked to perfection. It really has. He's done, obviously done some good scouting on Mount Everett, knows they want, he wanted to force them to beat them from outside, and they're trying to get inside, and he just won't let them get there. And his, te his team has done an excellent job of executing that, as well as getting the ball inside against the Mount Everett zone. Creamer still with the basketball, almost had it stolen. 
And there, it's going to be a turnover because it was not deflected by a McCann player. So things are looking really good with 2.39 left on the clock in this ball game and a nice 13-point lead for the Hornets. Yeah, McCann's held Everett to three points in the second half. Boisvert gives it up. Stolen away, and guess who? It's Stuernagel. Emily all the way to the hoop. She lays it up. It's just too hard off the glass. She's, uh, she's missing bunnies tonight, John. She's working hard. Yeah. She's having trouble putting the ball in the hoop. Oh, knocking down a beautiful jumper is Amaya Todd. And she gets in the scoring column at a great time. 29-14 as the Hornets have opened it up here. Just a little over two minutes to play. I'll tell you, Amaya's only got two points tonight, but she's given some tough minutes for McCann. Had some good rebounds, played some good defense. Nice to see her get rewarded with a basket there. Stronega's shot is short, and Boysford tried saving it, but went off her fingertips. And Hannah will take a seat, and that's probably going to be it for her. And she's done a great job. John, she did exactly what she needed to do in the second half. Great work by Hannah Boysford. Nine of her 11 points coming in the second half to help McCain extend this lead. And as we mentioned, probably close to 20 rebounds tonight. There's a steal by Reynolds. Knocked away. Everything's gone McCann's way. They've, they've, they pretty much have dominated the half. It was a nice look by Reynolds. She made a nice steal, and then she tried to find Todd going to the basket, but Mount Ever got back and tipped it away. Reynolds shot. Back iron, no good. Chamney with the rebound. I think give Chamney credit for a double-double tonight, too. She's... Had a bunch of rebounds herself tonight. Many on the offensive end. Nice inbounds pass. It won't go, but Todd will go to the line and she'll get two shots. Again, those interior passes for McCann tonight have been very well executed. They get some good scoring opportunities. First one will go. While we're still on the air, John, let me let me give everybody uh, the, the the scores that uh, of games that Mount Ever have played in. They have they have scored sixteen in a loss, thirty in a win, twenty six in a loss, twenty five in a loss, and twenty three in a loss. So uh, the second one's also no good. So they're used to giving up this amount of points, but scoring just a little bit more. Yeah, McCain's holding about 10 points under their average yeah. tonight. It's been yes. an excellent defense effort by the Hornets. Well executed game plan by the Lady Hornets. Emily Stornagel. Carpenter goes up, gets her own rebound, and she's fouled. Well, she's worked hard. She's battled in there tonight. She only has four points, but uh, she has battled all night long defensively. She had a couple early baskets off in the paint, but uh, McCain's done a good job of shutting her down the last half of this basketball game. In and out. They just can't get anything to fall tonight. 108 on the clock. It just won't fall from they, they, can't, get they can't get anything to fall. We talked about McCann getting some of those rolls, but never has got, not gotten one all night. Ava Kratz with the basketball. So stay with McCann. Under a minute. So it's just, uh, just a matter of what the final score will be. Well, McCann will pick up their first win of the season. Jamney down the line, goes up. Oh, in and out. Everything but the hoop. 
That's a great move to the basket by Chantley. Creamer has the ball almost knocked away. All elementary now. They've just got to get some shots up. Harper just still battling in there. And scoring. Number one, Ella Gennari. That was all set up by Good Hustle by Mikhail Carpenter. 29-16. Probably no shot here. I think McCann will be very competitive down in, in their league, John, down the road. Well, I'll be interested to see how they do against Granby. Like I said, they played uh, the second-place team to a 10-point game on their yeah. court. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see when they get them up here in the Hornets' nest. And uh, after five consecutive losses to open the season, jo Coach Justin Kranz picks up his first win as girls basketball coach at McCann as the Hornets take a 29-16 victory over the Eagles of Mount Everett. And uh, don't go away, ladies and gentlemen. We will be right back with the final totals. Okay, we are back down on the floor after McCann's uh, much needed, and it's got to feel good, first one of the season over uh, Mount Everett. And uh, Coach, first of all, um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of a rivalry with, uh, with Mount Everett for a long time here, uh, both boys and girls. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they're, you know, they're in the, they're in your division too. Yeah. And uh, this has got to feel real good. These kids worked hard tonight. They did, yeah. They they played their tails off. Um, you know, we've been getting better and better each game, and it was just a matter of time to kind of finally break through. And they were able to do it tonight. But yeah, I just talking to them in the locker room. They all had valuable minutes. They all contributed out there, and it was a, you know, really a team win. They did a great job. Yeah, and and you're very very young. Yes, we are. Yep, we're young. We got our, our lone senior over here, Hannah, who, who keeps us anchored. Yeah. Um, you, can, I mean, you saw it out there tonight. She's all we, over the floor. We did, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And so she's a great leader for the younger girls, but we, we do have, we have a lot of youth. We have a lot of youth, especially at the point position. Um, so, you know, every night is just working on getting better and better, and, you know, they paid off tonight. And uh, we'll, we'll start with uh, Aiden Champney and... You had an incredible ball game. Uh, you feed each other really, really well. Uh, it was kind of like the Stuart Nagel girl with Carpenter down at the other end. We were noticing. So, uh, but uh, you, you do it all, uh, both of you. So it, it's like uh, you, you, you rebound, you pass well, you look for each other, uh, you share the basketball. Uh, but tell, tell us how this feels at that first win. Well, our girls have worked really hard this season, coming from you know a little rough line of losses, but. We've worked really well together so far, and I hope it continues throughout the season. Yeah, I mean, you, you play some decent close games, and, and we knew it was going to happen at some point. And Hannah, I, I had said uh, uh, on the air, uh, you had two points at halftime. And I said, I think Hannah Boyce was going to have to score a little bit more in the second half, and you, and you did. And uh, you, you, uh, you, you must have felt really good out there tonight, uh, you know, pounding the boards and using the glass. And also, you, you look for your teammates. Yeah, I mean, I try to look for open shots and take what I can, but if I, they're double teaming me or whatnot, look for the open man, Aiden's usually there. So sharing the ball is a win's a win, no matter who's scoring. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we, we, we call the game, and we don't keep stats per se like like statisticians do, but uh, we, we kind of unofficially had almost both of you with, with a double-double, which, which means – double figures in scoring and in rebounds and uh, that's pretty impressive for, for high school sports. So we have somebody else waiting here to interview but uh, anyway uh, congratulations uh, Coach Justin Krantz, uh, Aiden Champney and Hannah Boysfer on your first win and uh, congratulations and, and good luck down the road and uh, keep it going. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for coming Coach. Out Take care. Appreciate thank, it. thank you. Uh, Coach Justin Krantz and uh, the two stars of the game their leading scorers senior Hannah Boysfer and uh, Aiden Champney. So the final score again uh, from McCann uh, the Hornets a 29 and uh, 16, I believe, for uh, Mount Everett. For Peter Gentile and uh, John Franzoni, I'm Rick Bruce saying thanks, everybody. See you again soon. Good night.